everyone, this is Wayne Rivers at FBI, where we build better contractors. This week, I want to talk about how leaders can escape their echo chambers. Two housekeeping things. You've heard me talk about this next boot camp, February 9 and 10, 23. Get your folks signed up. If you know anyone who would be a great consultant, we are hiring. So let us know who that might be, and we will certainly get in touch with them. This, this week, um, the, my inspiration comes from a Harvard Business Review article by Dina Smith in July of 22. And she says, the higher leaders go, the more likely they are to find themselves in an echo chamber surrounded by people who think like them and agree with them. And I think that probably tends to be true. You know, the traditional employee, the org chart, traditionally chart looks like a pyramid with the CEO at the top. And, you know, the old saying is it's lonely at the top. And I think that's probably true. So, um, she talks about three examples of leaders stifling open communications in their organizations. The, the first person was somebody who used the Socratic method to a degree that it was exhausting to bring ideas because, oh gosh, it just, he, he would work you so hard to flesh out the, the idea that people became discouraged from taking new concepts or new thoughts to him. Uh, the second person was a super fast paced executive. And people thought that they were wasting his time. In fact, he gave off signals looking at his watch and things like that, that people were wasting his time when they were delivering information. And the third one was the kind of executive that says, um, yes, but however, uh, have you thought of this? Well, actually, that won't work. because So killing, you know, it's like strangling these ideas in the crib before they have a chance even to see the light of day. And I remember one of our members calling and he had a problem in one of his offices because the leader in that office was one of the types that didn't like bad news. So it, it was kind of a kill the messenger kind of thing. And if you came to him, my project is really behind on schedule. I'm afraid we've got, we're going to have this problem, you know, shoot the messenger kind of leadership doesn't work. And, and so problems fail to come up in that particular office where they could be addressed early. And so our member had to make a change to get the kind of leadership in place where they could address problems early. As Dennis says, they could run to their problems with leadership rather than having leadership kick the problems out the back door. So what about this is important to you? Well, none of us want to be in an echo chamber. We all want to be enlightened and great leaders. So six tips for being uh, a better leader in the sense that you're not in an echo chamber. You know, walk the talk. You've got to show that your actions, your employees recognize your actions are louder than your words. So model the behaviors that you want to see. If you want your people to have open and honest communication, you've got to exhibit that you're willing to participate in open and blunt conversation too. The second thing is continuously solicit ideas and feedback. You know, you can go to your people and say, you know, we all have blind spots, me included. I have a bunch of them. I want you to help me with mine. I'll help you with yours. You know, let's be open. If I'm on base, I want you to, if I'm off base, I want you to say so. Same thing. I'll do that courtesy for you. Feedback is a gift, right? Uh, the third thing, demonstrate curiosity and then listen. Uh, be emotionally intelligent. There was a famous thing. I think it was uh, George Bush, President 41. He was in a presidential debate on television and he looked at his watch as if, I don't want to be here. I'm not comfortable here. I'm in, I'm impatient. That was a big thing. You know, I don't know if it cost him the election or not, but it was a big thing. It was in all the papers, which we used to read back then. So listen actively and ask questions. Oh, hmm, tell me more about that. Can you can you elaborate on that a little bit? Take this a little farther. You know, just encourage your people to think through ideas and new information. Uh, number four, speak last. You know, you know what's in your own mind. You know what's in your own heart. Let's find out what's in the minds and hearts of these other people. You, you, don't, you don't have to jump into a discussion and, you know, kill it or flesh it out or say, yeah, we're going to do this. Speak last. Kind of let the conversations develop around you. What do other people think and feel? The fifth thing is solicit other opinions. In some organizations, they even appoint a devil's advocate where you, you have to dissent from the conventional wisdom or the prevailing uh, attitude of other people in the room. You know, for us, it's always been me and Dennis. We've never agreed. You've heard me say we've never agreed. So, you know, who's your dentist? Find your dentist. If you have to, appoint your dentist or maybe a, two or three people that you're, make them your dentist committee. <laughs> um, 
And then the sixth thing, uh, Dina Smith didn't write about this, but it, it works for me. I know it works for so many of you too. Join a peer group. Golly Moses. Leon Danko wrote in the 1970s, you need to surround yourself with risk-taking peers. What did he mean? You know, your lawyer works for you. Your CPA works for you. Your banker works for you. Your COO, your CFO, they all work for you. So at some point, they, they're they limited in what they can say and do because they want to continue to work for you. <laughs> no, none of them want to risk their job or their, you know, their business alliance with you. So you need to be surrounded by risk-taking peers. And I don't care whether it's your local Vistage chapter or, or whatever it happens to be. Find peers that you can be open and honest and vulnerable with. Give them feedback. Let them give you feedback. I'm telling you, iron sharpens iron and it works. Find a peer group and join it. So what works for you? How do you ensure that you're not in an echo chamber and you're getting the kind of diversity of thinking and ideas that you need to be successful in construction? This is Wayne Rivers at FBI and we build better contractors.